communities and of course good morning to everyone out there on Facebook as well. Happy Pride! Greetings and welcome to all of you in the name of our Creator, the one who brings us all together for the sake of love. Today we are celebrating Pride Sunday. All month has been Pride Month, but today is the anniversary of the Pride Movement itself. And so today we acknowledge and we honor the pioneers of the LGBTQ2 plus community, and we give thanks. We recognize how far we've come, and we also realize how much further we have to go, especially when it comes to supporting our trans communities. In many ways, our trans communities continue to be betrayed not only by humanity, but also by the LGBTQ2 plus community as well. And I want to establish that right off the bat and hold our trans community up and affirm that we all need to do better when it comes to establishing justice for our trans folks. Just received word that I'm sideways on Facebook, so I will try and fix that for you in just a moment, Facebook. I'd also like to make an announcement that uh, we will be celebrating communion during today's uh, service. So for anyone who might not have had a chance yet to make provisions of uh, bread uh, or juice or even a little wine this morning, then uh, now would be a great time to make that happen. Okay, let us begin this morning by acknowledging the territory upon which we are gathered and uh, opening in prayer. I, this morning, find myself in the Huntsville area of Ontario, so I am currently on the traditional territory of the Anish Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, and the Ojibwe, as well as the uh, Potawatomi 
uh, peoples. And they fall under the Robinson-Huron Treaty of 1850 and the Williams Treaty of 1923. For our Emanuel community back in uh, Waterloo Region, uh, we acknowledge that they are on the traditional territory uh, of uh, the Haudenosaunee Six Nations Iroquois peoples. This tract of land includes 10 kilometers on either side of the Grand River, which is known as the Haldeman Tract. The original peoples of that land include the Attawandering, also known as the Neutral Peoples, and the Anishinaabe as well. The original peoples retain less than 5% of Six Nations land. The original peoples have sought to walk gently on this land and we endeavor to follow their example. We seek a new relationship with First Nations peoples through truth and reconciliation and we actively seek right relations based in honor and in deep respect. Friends, let us pray. Creator and creative God, we are animated by your love. You gifted us with differences that illuminate the breadth and the beauty, wisdom and practices of love in your creation. In whatever ways we still struggle to accept and celebrate our own unique beings, free us from the narrow thinking that confines constrains or condemns your good work in us. For it is in the affirming of ourselves that we may affirm each other, and it is in the aff affirmation of each other that we affirm you, our loving God. Amen. Jesus says, my peace I leave with you, a peace the world cannot give. May the peace of Christ be with you. And friends, we know that we are holding each other close in this time of being apart. Well, friends, at this time, I have a uh, surprise for you. I would like to invite the children at this time to open their cameras and for everyone else who is on our GoToMeeting platform, if you could move your settings to uh, view active cameras, then you will be able to see the kids as they come online as well. Here we go. There's Brendan. Hi, Brendan. Nice to see you. And there's Lisa and there's little Erica. And uh, I see Bridget is coming on. Wonderful, great to see you. And I think we might have Charles and Penelope out there as well, watching us from home. Well, it's so good to see all of you. I missed you so much from week to week. I have a surprise for you this week. This week, my partner and my wife, Rachel, is going to read a story for you. Rachel, are you ready to read a story this morning? Sure. Rachel has a wonderful story called Sparkle Boy. Here, here is your book, um, and uh, I will invite Rachel to come now. Good morning, everyone. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. All right, let's see. Today I'm gonna to read a story called Sparkle Boy. I just learned of this story and I really like it. I hope you do too. It is written by Leslea Newman and illustrated by Maria Mola. Let's begin. Jesse adored all things shimmery, glittery, and sparkly. Look at my shimmery skirt, Jesse said to her little brother, Casey, as she twirled into the living room and her skirt twirled out all around her. Casey looked up from his al alphabet locks. 
Ooh, shimmery, shimmery, he said, reaching out his hand. I want shimmery. Jessie stopped twirling, and her skirt stopped twirling. You can't have a shimmery skirt, Casey, she said. Why? Casey asked. Because boys don't wear shimmery things, said Jessie. Right, Mama? Mama thought for a minute. If Casey wants to wear a skirt, Casey can wear a skirt, she said. I don't have a problem with that. Mama went upstairs and came back with a skirt that was now too small for Jessie. Here, buddy, she said to Casey, try this on. Ooh, shimmery, shimmery, Casey said as he twirled around and his shimmery skirt twirled out all around him. Casey twirled and twirled until he got dizzy and plopped down on his bottom. Casey laughed. Jessie frowned. The next afternoon, Jessie went to a birthday party. When she came home, she raced into the kitchen. Look at my glittery nails, Jessie said, fanning out her fingers. Her nails glittered in the light. Casey looked up from his animal puzzle. Ooh, glittery, glittery. He said, pulling Jessie's hands toward him. I want glittery. Jessie snatched her hands away. You can't have glittery nails, Casey, she said. Why? Casey asked. Because boys don't wear glittery nail polish, Jessie said. Right, Daddy? Daddy thought for a minute. Most boys don't wear nail polish, she said. But Casey can if he wants to. There's no harm in that. Daddy went upstairs and came back with a bottle of glittery nail polish. Can't you just paint his toenails, Jessie asked, and then make him put his socks on? That's not a bad idea, Daddy said to Casey. What do you say, pal? No, Casey shouted. He held out his hands and kept them perfectly still while Daddy painted his fingernails. Ooh, glittery, glittery, Casey said as he spread his fingers so wide his nails glittered in the light. Jessie shook her head. The next morning, Jessie and Casey's grandmother came to visit. Abuelita, I like your sparkling bracelets, said Jessie. You can have one, I have plenty, Abuelita said. She took off a bracelet and slid it onto Jessie's wrist. Jessie swiveled her arms back and forth and watched yeah. the wrist sparkle. Casey looked up from his dump truck. Ooh, sparkly, sparkly, Jessie, or Casey said. I want sparkly. Jessie hit her arm behind her back. You can't have a sparkly bracelet, Casey, she said. Why? Casey asked. Because boys don't wear sparkly bracelets, said Jessie. Right, Abuelita? Abuelita thought for a minute. I've never seen a boy wear a sparkly bracelet, she said. Until now. Abuelita turned to Casey. Here is Sparkle Boy, she said. She took off another bracelet and slid it onto Casey's arm. There's no reason why Casey can't wear a bracelet, Jesse. He isn't hurting anyone. Ooh, sparkly, sparkly, Casey said as he swirled, swiveled his arm back and forth and watched his bracelet sparkle. Jesse stomped her foot and ran inside. On Saturday, Daddy went to grocery shopping and Mama took Jessie and Casey to the library. Jessie came downstairs wearing her shimmery skirt and sparkly bracelet. Her nails glittered in the light. Soon, Mama came downstairs with Casey. He wore his shimmery skirt and his sparkly bracelet. His nails glittered in the light too. Mama, Jessie cried as she thrust her fist onto her hip. Why is Casey dressed like that? Because that's how Casey wants to dress, Mama said. But that's not how boys are supposed to dress, said Jessie. Casey looks silly. I don't think Casey looks silly, Mama said, smiling at him. I think Casey looks like Casey. When Jessie and Casey and Mama got to the library, story time had already started. They sat in the back to listen. After the librarian finished reading, 
Mama went to the front desk to check out some books. Jessie and Casey waited for her in the children's room. I like your skirt, a girl said to Jessie, and I like your sister's skirt. Jessie didn't say anything. I'm not a sister, Casey said. I'm a brother. You can't be a brother, said the girl. Why? asked Casey. Because you're a girl, she answered. I'm a boy, said Casey. You are, an older boy said. He stared at Casey and then laughed. Hey, look, he called to his friend. A boy in a skirt. The boy's friend laughed too. Then he knelt in front of Casey. Dude, oh. said, you can't go around wearing a skirt. Why? Casey asked. Because you look weird and everyone will laugh at you, said the boy. Why? Casey asked again. Because boys don't wear skirts and bracelets and nail polish. Everybody knows that, said the boy. Right? He said, turning to Jesse. Jesse looked at Casey. His face was scrunched up like it always did right before he was going to cry. Why can't boys wear skirts and bracelets and nail polish? Jesse asked the boys. Because, said one of the boys. That's just the way it is, said the other. Not anymore, Je said Jesse as she put her arm around Casey's shoulder. Come on, little guy, she said. Let's find Mama and go home. Jesse and Casey adored all things shitter, shimmery, glittery, and sparkly, especially each other. And that's the end of the story today. Thanks for sharing. Thank you so much, Rachel, for sharing that wonderful story with us today. I wonder what everyone thought of that story. Did everybody like the story? Yeah, I yeah, I see uh, Delaney liked it. Bridget, did you like the story? Oh, I'm getting a thumbs up over there from Erica. Hi, baby Alex, we love you. What's your favorite part of the story? Does anybody want to share their favorite part of the story? Well, I can tell you my favorite like part of the story. I would love to tell you my, what was that, Bridget? Oh, okay. So, Bridget, did you want to share your favorite part? Okay, well, I will share my favorite part with you. My favorite part of the story was when Casey's sister, Jessie, stood up for him and in front of the um, older boys that were uh, teasing him at the library. And all of a sudden, Jesse, his older sister, was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's not right. And so she learned a lesson, she taught a lesson, and she also treated her brother the way he always should have been treated, the way that he was able to express himself any way that made him happy. And so that was my favorite part of the story. I'm so glad to spend some time with you today, and I so look forward to seeing you again. I'm going to be on holidays for a few weeks now, so you will have some other people talking to you on Sunday mornings, um, but they are very, very nice people, and I'm sure that you'll all get have a good time together. So I'll say bye for now, and uh, we'll see you again uh, at the very end of the service and we'll share some time of fellowship together. So bye for now, bye, kids. You guys. Thanks. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye. Okay, friends, and we are going to sing now. Our first hymn, uh, we of course will be muted, but we will be singing in our hearts and in our homes. And our uh, congregation member, uh, Rob Seamus, will be leading us in the hymn from More Voices, 
154, and it's called Deep in Our Hearts. For those on the GoToMeeting platform, your words will be on the screen. So over to you now, uh, Rob. Deep in our hearts, there is a common vision. Deep in our hearts, there is a common song. Deep in our hearts, there is a common story telling creation that we are one. Deep in our hearts, there is a common purpose. Deep in our hearts, there is a common goal. Deep in our hearts, there is a sacred message telling for justice, peace, and peace in harmony. Deep in our hearts, there is a common longing. Deep in our hearts, there is a common theme. Deep in our hearts, there is a common current flowing to freedom like a stream. Deep in our hearts, there is a common vision. Deep in our hearts, there is a common song. Deep in our hearts, there is a common story telling creation that we are one. Back to you, Jen. Thank you, Rob, for sharing um, your gift of music with us this morning. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Genesis, and it is chapter 9, verses 12 to 17. God said, this is the symbol of the covenant that I am drawing up between me and you and every living thing with you on behalf of every future generation. I have placed my rainbow in the clouds and it will be a symbol of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember the covenant between me and you and every living being among all the creatures. Flood waters will never again destroy all creatures. The rainbow will be in the clouds, and upon seeing it, I will remember the enduring covenant between me and every living being of all the earth's creatures. God said to Noah, this is the symbol of the covenant that I have set up between me and all creatures of the earth. Herein lies wisdom. Thanks be to God. <laughs> We've been given great opportunity recently to delve deeper into the various histories of racialized and oppressed peoples. We've discussed black history and the importance of black and the Black Lives Matter movement. We've discussed indigenous history on National Indigenous Peoples Day. We've discussed over the course of Pride Month what it means to be a people of pride by learning that the pride flag at its very core declares the right of queer peoples to exist free from the fear of persecution and oppression. Well, today I would like to talk about biblical history. More often than not, when people want to make a case against LGBTQ2 plus individuals, they quote scripture. It's offensive. As a minister and as a queer person myself, I am always offended. 
And so today I would like to talk about the clobber tax and dedicate today's message to the liberation of LGBTQ2 plus people everywhere. There are six biblical texts that are widely used to forward homophobic agendas and create arguments for the condemnation and persecution of homosexual and queer identities. And they are widely known as the clobber texts. It's impossible to speak of gay persecution without looking at the Bible. So let's learn our biblical history today, shall we? The first clobber text is the Sodom and Gomorrah story from the book of Genesis, chapter 19, verses 1 to 38. The Sodom and Gomorrah story has been widely used to forward homophobic agendas and is often used to criticize same-sex relationships, especially between men. The argument generally asserts that because the intentions of the men of Sodom was to know the angel visitors who were also men, that for this reason, God burned the city to the ground. And so their intentions must have been sinful to God. Well, this is a twisted and uninformed reading of the text. In this specific case, we are actually told the appropriate interpretation of the text by the prophet Ezekiel, who tells us plainly, quoting now from the book of Ezekiel, this was the guilt of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters, meaning the people of Sodom, had an excess of food and prosperous ease, but they did not aid the poor and the needy. There is no mention of the relationship between the men other than the men of Sodom were completely inhospitable to the angels because they wanted to dominate them by force rather than welcome them in camaraderie. Showing dominion and power over and withholding hospitality to the stranger in your midst, that is the actual sin of Sodom. This story never had anything to do with queer relationships and had everything to do with the lack of hospitality and the character of the town people. Everyone in Sodom was wicked and inhospitable, so God burned it to the ground. Any prudent and unbiased research into this story will reveal that the sin was being inhospitable to the stranger, the poor, and the needy. The point of the Sodom and Gomorrah story is that people of God are called to be people who kindly receive the outcasts and outsiders, not create them. Moving on now to the Leviticus laws from chapter 18 and chapter 20 in the book of Leviticus. Well, Leviticus provides a whole laundry list of so-called abominations. These abominations had one specific purpose, and this purpose was not discussing LGBTQ2 plus people. The purpose, scholars believe, is more about what the Jewish people in those days perceived as a list of things that made them unclean, but not necessarily inherently evil. The purpose of this laundry list was to create a unique identity for the Jewish people. It was never to establish a timeless ethic binding for Christians of all time. Let us all take a moment to remember that Jesus walked around touching lepers and eating with the outcasts, and this made him unclean in the eyes of some. But he challenged that perception directly. Jesus is sending a clear message that says, just because someone else might think something doesn't necessarily mean it's true. When it comes to the questioning of people born with same-sex attraction or uh, gay couples living together in a loving relationship, these two verses in Leviticus simply are unhelpful. They're not trying to answer these questions at all. They get taken out of context and applied generally to all Christians of all time when they were intended for a specific Jewish community in their time. 
And I think that we can all agree that over the centuries, much of the Leviticus laws have undergone much revisionism, especially as it relates to slavery, the submission of women, divorce, and the blending of fabrics. In those days, same-sex relationships and queer identities were not understood to the degree that we understand them today. And for this reason, it is an abuse of this text to pluck it out of context and paint all people with the same brush for all time. And in Paul's letters, two letters Paul writes, one to the church in Corinth and one to the church in Ephesus. And these uh, scriptures are re recorded, one in the letter to the uh, Corinthians in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. And the other one is uh, to the church in Ephesus as rec recorded in 1 Timothy. We hear in both letters from Apostle Paul that the law was made for the righteous, but the lawbreakers, the wrongdoers, and the ungodly to which same-sex relationships are quoted. Translators actually can't decide on how to handle two Greek words used in these passages. The one Greek word is malakoi which generally points to a male who is effeminate. So it's speaking to more of an identity. The second one is arsenocoitus, which generally references more of a homosexual act. Some translations go with the behavior and some go with the identity. But in any case, scholars note that there is a distinction between a certain type of act and one's identity. What is of importance here is that Paul is naming a certain type of act. Paul was naming specific kinds of same-sex behavior. He was not saying that any and all are sinful. Much scholarship and historical data suggests the type of behavior that Paul was condemning was pederasty. Paul was referring to youthful callboys and their customers. A person's sexual identity is not what is at stake in these verses, but some types of relationships are. And research suggests it's the pederasty that is condemned not homosexuality or queerness as an identity. In those days, in those regions, pederasty was commonplace. The most common known examples of pederasty were Roman officers and officials who purchased boy slaves for sexual intercourse, and the boys were often procured through temple prostitution, and these officials kept them as personal sex slaves somewhat like sex trafficking is today. For instance, in the scriptures, the Roman guard, the centurion, um, the centurion's relationship to his beloved sick boy slave is actually recorded in the Gospel of Luke and in the Gospel of Matthew, and is often identified as a pederasty relationship. And this is an important connection because Jesus extends grace to the centurion by healing his young boy slave whom he loved. In any regard, I think we can all agree that Paul is right to condemn pederasty and slave relationships. This in no way should be generalized into the same sex relationships as we know them today. Finally, we come to uh, Paul's letter to the Romans. This is our uh, sixth text and uh, often the one used most often uh, where God gives them over to their depravity. Uh, chapter 1, verses 25 to 27. The first thing we need to understand about this letter Paul writes to the church in Rome is that his purpose is highly specific. There is much at stake for Paul when he writes this letter. He identifies himself as the apostle to the Gentiles, which means he sees his, his role as a disciple. His purpose of his discipleship was to unite 
two different groups of people and two different cultures under one gospel of Christ. Paul is trying to unite Jews and non-Jews to the work of Jesus. And there is a lot that they do not agree on. Like any of us would, Paul needs to pick his battles wisely because they are never going to see eye to eye on all topics of theology and culture. We need to remember that Paul's childhood, adolescence, and adulthood was completely shaped by the Torah. Paul was thoroughly a Jewish man. To this end, it can be noted that Apostle Paul is rooted in a long line of Jewish thought that presents a strong critique of same-sex behavior. In addition to the social pressures of a uh, first century context, in which, of course, he is subject to. Paul's internalized homophobia, if you will, uh, regardless of his personal feelings, will inevitably keep him from making a case that is other that, of, that of course, doesn't denounce same-sex relationships. And we know he hates pederasty, which is very common in Rome. So he likely wants to discourage the pederasty while also being subject to the social pressures of his day, which compel him to condemn all same-sex behavior equally. You know, not to mention here that Paul actually hated heterosex, too. Just saying. Paul is commenting on human society at large and focuses on behavior itself a distinction between persons of a heterosexual and a homosexual orientation was almost certainly unknown to him. Scholars suspect that the Jewish community was resisting pagan ritual and behaviors that were deemed unclean from the Torah perspective, and Paul was likely sympathetic to his Jewish counterparts in this regard. And it is actually in a tragic twist that these words, originally written in an attempt to unify two fractured groups, these words have been misused to justify the division and support the hostility between the church and LGBTQ2 plus community. In an excellent resource called The Savage Text by Adrian Thatcher, he questions the human tendency to use the, the Bible as a guidebook for acceptable behavior. He makes a great case that suggests when we do this, we are actually elevating the text beyond the one to whom it points, thus making the, uh, an idol of the Bible. The text is not God. The Bible is not God. The Bible is inspired, sure, but it is not the word of God. Jesus is the word made flesh for Christians. Uh, Jesus has nothing to say on the topic of queer relationships, as we know. The Bible should never be revered more than the God to whom it points. And when it does, the Bible very quickly replaces God, thus becoming an idol. Thatcher agrees, as do I, that any interpretation of scripture that hurts people, oppresses people, or destroys people cannot be the right interpretation, no matter how traditional or historical. People, children, and youth are killing themselves because they feel like they can't be gay and Christian because they can't be gay and loved, and this needs to stop. The Bible was written not by God, but by men who were struggling to understand who they were in their time and in their place. They were wrestling with their own spiritual and cultural traditions in the face of other cultural and spiritual traditions, and before their understanding of their God. Bishop John Shelby Spong rightly names that the Apostle Paul himself 
is rolling over in his grave to think that we would hold his words equal to or even higher than the God to whom he had committed and submitted his life. Paul himself saw himself as a wretched man, a sinner, and as a worker for Christ. He would be the first one to condemn us for elevating his words above or even equal to God. Never, never, never would he have seen himself this way. So why do we? Like Paul, I too am a sinner. For sure, we all fall short of the glory of God. I am a sinner, but my homosexuality is not one of them. Friends, in the early morning hours of June 28, 1969, police raided a bar called the Stonewall Inn, located in the Greenwich Village part of New York City. This location was frequently raided, but on this particular night, the gay community had had enough, and they resisted arrest. They resisted persecution, and a riot ensued. For the very first time, at least in New York City, the raid was unsuccessful. The gay community flooded the streets, and the police ended up barricading themselves inside a bar for safety. The police were hiding, and the gay community ran wild in the streets. Over the course of the next several days, the gay community grew into demonstrations and marches demanding gay rights. The clash between gay pride and police power generated a spark. This spark ignited a movement, and on the first year anniversary of that raid on June 28, 1970, the very first organized Pride March was held. Today, the Pride Parade, the Pride Movement, is recognized and celebrated around the world. Anyone who is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or queer in North America can trace their liberation back to this singular event. This is the history of our liberation. We are free. And as Christians, we worship the Christ who maintains our freedom. The good news of the gospel of Christ reveals our freedom once and for all time. Never let any of us try and closet, condemn, or reject anyone using biblical text for this reason, nor any other for that matter, except maybe pederasty. Restricting someone's freedom to express the beauty of their identity perverts the love of God and is thus abusive to God's people everywhere. God desires relationship with us all. God desires us to love one another. At no point in time does God want us to separate ourselves from community with our fellow humans. Nothing does this quicker than sitting in judgment of another person's life. If you are LGBTQ2 plus and Christian, I am here to tell you, I see you. You are beautiful and you are loved and you are affirmed by God and never ever let anyone tell you any different. This is my final message for our allies. Thank you for educating yourself and for walking this journey with us, for we cannot be whole without you. For the homophobic, stop using the Bible to condemn LGBTQ2 plus people. It is uninformed and it is abusive. For queer people, Remember where you came from. Remember the Stonewall pioneers. And remember that our trans friends still need us. For everyone, take care of each other and love one another. For in that way, 
all will know that we are disciples of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Rainbow God, because people of every sexual orientation, gender expression, and gender identity have the right to live with dignity and without persecution or discrimination, we remember in our prayers LGBTQ2 plus people of Chechnya, Uganda, Zambia, Saudi Arabia, and Iraq and elsewhere who have been murdered and tortured because of who they are. We remember them and we remember the people who love them. LGBTQ2 plus refugees from around the world seeking safety and sanctuary. We remember them and the people who welcome them. Trans and gender diverse people in Canada, the US and Brazil and elsewhere who are targeted victims of hate crimes and assaults. We remember them and the people who love them. LGBTQ2 plus people whose dignity and self-esteem have been eroded by hateful systems and structures. We remember them and we seek to be people who love them more fully. Rainbow God, we each uniquely reflect your glory and express your love. But anti-gay violence, homophobia, and transphobia have blocked many from recognizing your beauty in all people. All of creation suffers from the effects of such hate, fear, and violence. Daily, may we dedicate ourselves to building bridges of love and hope where harmful divisions have been made, making equity and equality for all people our goal while working continually for justice so that everyone can live fully in your love. Friends, at this time, we hold uh, our community members up in prayer, and specifically we name today Eleanor and Willard King. Eleanor has had her surgery. She has come through okay, and we are praying that God's strength rain down upon her, that you equip her back to health, and that Willard may be comforted as he supports her in this journey, and may they know that your love surrounds them in this time. And we hold also our beloved refugee Dolly, her sister Fulu in Burma has died. And so we hold her in our thoughts so close, as she grieves uh, from a distance so far from those that she loves. Let us take a moment now to pray the silent prayers that may be on our hearts this moment. And friends, now please join me in reciting an alternative version of the Lord's Prayer. We will have the words come up on the screen here on our GoToMeeting platform. For our folks on Facebook, you're welcome to listen along. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and all that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, loving God in whom we experience heaven. The hallowing of your name echoes through the universe. May the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. May your will be done by all created beings. May your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and be realized on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. May we be forgiven in equal measure to which we forgive. And for the hurts we absorb from one another, heal us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. And from the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen.
and we will have Rob sing for us again, this time from More Voices number 138, and the hymn is called My Love Colors Outside the Lines. Take it away, Rob. My love colors outside the lines, exploring paths that few could ever find and takes me into places where I've never been before and opens doors to worlds outside the lines. My Lord colors outside the lines, turns wounds to blessings, water into wine and takes me into places where I've never been before and opens doors to worlds outside the lines. We'll never walk on water if we're not prepared to drown body and soul, need a soaking from time to time. And we'll never move the gravestones if we're not prepared to die and realize there are worlds outside the lines. My soul longs to color outside the lines, turns wounds to blessings, water into wine. I want to walk beyond the boundaries where I've never been before. Throw open doors to worlds outside the lines. We'll never walk on water if we're not prepared to drown. Body and soul need a soaking from time to time. And we'll never move the gravestones if we're not prepared to die and realize there are worlds outside the lines. My soul longs to color outside the lines. Tear back the curtains, sun come in and shine. I want to walk beyond the boundaries where I've never been before. Throw open doors to worlds outside the lines. Back to you, Jen. Sorry about messing up the second verse. <laughs> no worries. No worries at all, Rob. We are so grateful for you carrying us through these uh, music um, hymns uh, every Sunday, or most Sundays. And uh, so thank you very much. And uh, now we move into our time of offering. Since its beginning, the church was meant to be a place of chosen family, a community of outcasts and outlaws, dreamers and prophets, and uh, humble disciples of love. In the company of divine presence, we create belonging and we nurture justice with gratitude for the sacred labors of love in this place. Let us bring our offerings to God and to one another. We continue to be the church. Friends, we continue to be the living stones, the ones continuing to work for the life and the work of the church from our hearts and in our actions. The work continues of pastoral care, the work of outreach continues and the work of learning new ways to be together continues and we continue to greet the stranger in any and all ways. The love of Christ continues to motivate our hearts. And so may we all now take a moment to consider how our blessings might become a blessing for others. There are still many ways to send in your offerings and your donations for those who have offering envelopes you can still mail those in. The mail um, at the church is still being picked up every day. And so you can mail in your offering or your donation to 22 Bridgeport Road West, Waterloo, Ontario, N2L2Y3, addressed to Emmanuel United Church. 
and your PAR, pre-authorized remittance, can still be organized. Uh, you can still sign up for it or amend it. I'm sure Laura Mutton in the main office would be glad to hear from you. You can call her directly at 519-886-1471 to arrange a donation as well or sign up for PAR. You can go online to our website at emmanueluc.ca and click on the Canada Helps link. Uh, you can also send an e-transfer to donate at emmanueluc.ca and that will go to our beloved treasurer, uh, Wendy. And for the gifts that we have received and the gifts that we will receive, we give thanks. Folks, let us pray. God of provisions whose currency is love, we offer our resources freely, knowing that you want justice rolling down like water. We offer our blessing back to you as we use our gifts in service of your work. Accept these gifts from our hands, which we cast upon the waters of your love, a generous, ever-flowing stream, feeding the hungry, advocating for the oppressed, and renouncing injustice everywhere we find it, and always helping those in need. Accept these gifts for the work of the church, that they may transform and become love for all. Amen. Okay, friends, we will now enter our time of communion and celebrate the sacrament of communion together. I hope that you have had a chance to bring a little bread or even a cracker, some uh, juice, some water, maybe even a little wine this morning to the table. And if you haven't, please know that you are a part of Christ's communion, whether you are able to have the physical elements present or not. The Holy One be with you. Open your hearts to the one who is love. We open our hearts to you, O oh God. Let us give thanks to God, our creator, for the courage of the holy that lives in us. We give thanks. Bold and beloved one, Throughout history, you have revealed yourself to ways in ways that surprise and disrupt. You shocked the world when you were made known to us through vulnerability, born into a family fleeing political persecution. Through the scandal of your embodiment in Jesus led to crucifixion, still your spirit of new life is birthed anew among the marginalized. You live among us today in the lives of black trans women whose experience of violence are dismissed and ignored. You live within bisexual people and those living with HIV AIDS. You live in the babies born into the care of lesbian women. You wander school halls as trans children and navigate the streets as queer couples walking hand in hand. You come to us as LGBTQ, as LGBTQ2 people with no home, and you em are embodied by two-spirit people who are still fighting against the impacts of colonization, erasure, and stolen land. At times, we are offended by your self-expression. You take on flesh in people, places, and ideas we have been taught to fear or despise. And so we struggle and our hearts harden, our hospitality recoils, but still your love persists through beauty, compassion, and truth. You lure us into laying down our need to control. You move us, free us, and embrace us. By your grace, we are brought into the sacred labors of justice and transformation. We become free in Christ, to reject all evil and oppression. And like those who gathered with Jesus on the night of his arrest, we all come in need of grace. On the night before Jesus died, Jesus gathered 
with his disciples and with his friends. They gathered in an upper room to share a meal. And at that meal, Jesus took bread. He raised it, he blessed it, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he passed it to all of his disciples, saying, take each and every one of you, eat. And when you do this, do this often. And when you do, do this in remembrance of me. And after the meal was finished, likewise, Jesus took the cup and he raised it, he blessed it, and he gave thanks. And he passed it to all of his friends and his disciples. And he said, take each of you and drink, for this is a symbol of my blood. This is a symbol of the new covenant. This is the symbol of the new covenant created in me for all people for all time. Take and drink often, and when you do, remember me. In remembering the life of Jesus, we remember that he showed us the love of God is public, the love of God is intentional, and the love of God is explicit. And so we pray, pour out your spirit upon this bread and on this cup. Through these gifts, open our hearts to encounters with Christ in the strange and in the ordinary. May the bread of life and the cup of blessing strengthen us in courage to live as Jesus lived. In the name of the one who said, I am the bread of life, know that you belong. In the one of the name in the one in the name of the one who said, I am the vine, know that you belong. And in the name of the one who said, Love one another as I have loved you, know that you belong. This table of Christ belongs not to any sect or institution. This table belongs to Jesus and all, no matter what are welcome. Let us now share together in the mystery of our faith. Friends, I invite you now to take into your hands your bread. Take and eat, for it will sustain our strength. I invite you now, friends, take your drink, for it is the fruit of the vine, and it shall nourish our souls. Let us pray. Nourishing one, your gifts renew us in body, spirit, and mind. Through this taste of love, may the Spirit send us with a faith that is brave. Let no institution or narrow thinking hold us back. Make us people who boldly pursue collective justice. And may we tend gently to the world's pain. For the gift of grace we have received here today, we give thanks for the ways that you create possibilities in the midst of the impossible, and for the mystery of the faith we are called into, we give thanks. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, and to love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. And in our closing hymn, once again, Rob will lead us in singing of more voices, number 145, Draw the Circle Wide.
Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. God, the still point of the circle, round whom all creation turns. Nothing lost but held forever in God's gracious arms. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Let our hearts touch far horizons, so encompass great and small. Let our loving know no borders, faithful to God's call. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Let the dreams we dream be larger than we've ever dreamed before. Let the dream of Christ be in us, open every door. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Great job, Rob, thanks so much. People of pride, God blesses you, God keeps you, and God's face shines upon you. And it is for this reason that the peace of Christ is with us all. Go knowing that you are at peace, you are affirmed, and you are loved. Amen. I will say now to bye to our friends on Facebook. Thanks for tuning in. Look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now. And now Stephen will bring us into a time of fellowship with one another. Hi, everyone. Arthur, you can unmute everybody. Hey. Just, just Hang up your phone. That's it. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Oh, everybody looks so good. Hi, Ian. I see Ian there. And Laura. Yeah. Laura. Yeah. Laura, so good to see you. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Mom. Hello. <laughs> And she doesn't have a camera. Oh, okay. That sounds vaguely familiar. All right, all right. Everybody looks so good. David, your beard is getting so great. Hello, Elizabeth. <laughs> Hi, everybody. There's Rachel. And there's Brian Fox. I nice see you us today. I'll, I'll, I'll introduce Brian in a minute. Although you all know Brian. I wonder if Terry Martins is with us today. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's go on, everybody. Hello. Trying to get the. 
other pictures, you know. Stephen, can we mute everybody? Yeah, you're all seeing a new look here. <laughs> yeah, that's me. That's got a new look. There you go. I muted everybody. Jen, you can take control now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So I have a, f a couple of announcements here today. First, I would like to announce that Paul and Mary and Amy are celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary. Wow. <laughs> Good job. That is incredible. And I have a very special announcement. We have uh, several new members, and I would like to name them for you now. We, um, we won't obviously be able to do our um, uh, profession of faith ceremony, but we will do that once we start to get back together um, in, in the sanctuary. But uh, these are some members that uh, were, were eager to um, be added to our historical role and uh, join uh, our beloved Emmanuel community. So our new members are Jesse Belanger, uh, Priscilla Sin, and Ian Samolchuk. So Ian and Priscilla, and Megan Strauds es Essenbergs, Megan. And Megan actually came to us, she found us online, and uh, she loved our social justice presence and uh, wanted to join us. So welcome to Megan as well. We know that Mark Taylor has uh, returned to the Emanuel community, as well as Bet and Vern Spear, and uh, Deborah Azadi uh, has uh, uh, joined as well. So welcome, special, special welcome to all of you. We are so grateful to uh, have you among us in our midst, and I know that we will be enriched and blessed by your presence. So thanks for being uh, a part of us, and we really, really, really look forward to uh, celebrating with you in person as uh, safety allows. And the other thing I will just mention, we have Brian Potts with us today. Brian Potts is going to be covering service on July 19th. Do you want to wave, Brian? And I know you are all familiar with Brian as he has led worship for you all before. And so that will be on July 19th. And do we have Carrie Martins with us today? I'm not sure that we do, but uh, Carrie will um, comes to you from, she was a former pastor of uh, Sterling Mennonite. And uh, she also is currently worshiping, worshiping at Westminster United Church. And uh, I know she will do a wonderful, wonderful job and will be a wonderful pastoral presence for you on July 5th and July 12th. Speaking of the Westminster United Church community, one of our beloved has passed away this week, Lynn McCauley. Some of you will recall that Lynn uh, is a local uh, community social justice advocate and works for Lutherwood and she did incredible, incredible outreach in the way of affordable housing uh, and homelessness. And she passed away of cancer this past week. And so our hearts grieve with the Westminster United Church congregation and the family of Lynn McCauley. And with that, I will now um, ask for any other announcements or good news from all of you out there. I see Rob Seamus has an announcement. Yeah, so I know I put it in the, or asked Laura to put it into the uh, into the email, but I want people to, to really acknowledge that she got her Master's of Education in Social Justice Education. Can't be very easy to do during this time of social uh, distancing and, and online courses. Um, when we were chatting back and forth, she was quite pleased. Uh, the one thing she wasn't too happy about, of course, was the FedEx convocation that she had where they delivered her diploma to her. So. But I think she really deserves our, our praise that uh, she was able to do this. Hallelujah. Absolutely. Thank you so much for highlighting that, Rob. Um, incredible, incredible achievement uh, of our very own office manager, Laura Mutton. Great. Thanks, Rob. Any um, 
Anyone else here? Uh, Dave. Oh, Karen, I'm sorry, Karen, Karen Dixon. Yes, it's live from PEI. Go ahead, Karen Dixon. Exactly, I just wanted to say we made it to PEI. 19 hours in the car was really awful. And she still loves me. <laughs> but yeah, we, we made it here, so it's good. We're still, we're in prison though right now. This is, this is as far as we can go. All right, well, you make sure you abide by the law there. We don't want to have to bail you out of jail if you put the law down there. Don't worry, we'd bail you out. We'd only leave you there for a day or so. Don't worry, though. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to say, can I just say something? I just Lord. wanted to say, yeah, you're all looking at the new Lords. You're probably wondering, it's all off with COVID. COVID, yes. I decided to cut it all off. So when you see me, you'll be seeing me. You look beautiful. Thank you. Great to see you online, Loris. Can't wait to see you in person. <laughs> and I just want to say something here because my heart just leapt for joy. Uh, baby Jamie, I have not had a chance yet to really see baby Jamie. And I am so waiting to get my hands on that little munchkin. There <laughs> he is, baby Jamie. Oh, oh my heart just leaps for joy. Hi. And hi, Brendan. Can't hi. wait to get my hands on both of you folks. And some other good news for us is that on Tuesday uh, past, Michelle celebrated her 40th birthday. That's right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'm having trouble with my camera again. Frida. I can't turn it on. And it says this oh, meeting geez. does not include camera sharing. And I don't know what the problem is. I've been oh, trying dear. for a whole hour to get it on. Oh, dear. Yeah, I'm going to turn mine off. Maybe too many cameras in. Try it now, Frida. Oh, I bet you that's it. I bet you that's it. Uh, what? Right. Try it what now. Try to turn okay. it right We're, now. Try it all. It's try okay. it now, Frida. There's 15. There's only. No. No, let's see where you. It's I'm going to see where you are. It's trying. It's trying. So, Frida. It's the circle's so the, going around and around, but it's not coming out. So, so Frida, when you when you connect, and maybe we can try this next, like in between now and next Sunday. When you connect, it gives you two options of using the web or using the desktop app. And you, right now you're connected by the web, and that gives yeah. some problems. So we'll try to. Why don't you call me later on, like after the service? Uh, okay. And then we can. Okay. Yeah. You okay. Want you want my phone number right now? Oh, I think I'm. I'm sure I've got it. Okay. okay. Great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Frida. Thank you for continuing to try. I know that this is a, it's a learning curve for a lot of us, but uh, we love that you're here. I love to hear your voice, and I know Stephen will get you looked after. Um, I saw David. Yeah, I saw David Broderick. Did you still have an announcement, David? Oh, not not an, well, not good news. But I mean, Jen, as as you know, uh, a good friend of ours there. Uh, son, who is a, a friend of John's, passed away this week suddenly and unexpectedly from uh, an overdose. And Jen, I know you were uh, just coincidentally the the minister on call at the hospital, and uh, I just I know that it was a uh, uh, a real source of comfort to them to have you there, and uh, uh, friends of ours will know that we've we've talked about Austin and Alexis, the friends of our kids, uh, many times. And uh, uh, I don't know, I, I just I, I, I just wanted to share that. What's that? Just yeah, you know, keep uh, keep them in uh, in your your thoughts and prayers and, and heart, uh, Austin's family. Yeah, we sure will, David. It was um... It was there for, for the family and, and Austin during that time, and I uh, was um, 
humbled to be able to say some prayers during that very difficult time for them. So uh, definitely holding um, Austin's family in prayer and you and your family and John, of course, in prayer. Thanks for, for sharing. Okay, do I have any other? Uh, Stephen, not... are you at your cottage now? Are you in the Maritimes now, Stephen? I just have well, your phone your... number at you'll home. My... Yeah, you'll need my cell phone number. So call 519. Yeah. 580. Yes. 1545. 1545. 51958015545. That's right? correct. And that goes for anybody. That's the tech support number. We'll get you online. <laughs> Brian, look forward to checking okay. in with you sometime in the next couple of weeks. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, Frida. Well, thank you so much to everyone for continuing to be committed to um, gathering online and keeping us connected during these times. Uh, it's like Delaney you know, has something. Again. Oh, Delaney. Yes, of course, Delaney. Go ahead. So, um, uh, so um, a while ago, a few days ago, um, we uh, got tested for the coronavirus. And and um yeah and then now our grandpa and we're gonna bring our cat Tapasa with us but first she's gonna get um her surgery oh, she's gonna get stay I well, actually see. help the sound in our neighborhood <laughs> immensely go down mm -hmm. so. <laughs> And we don't have COVID. We went, had a test for COVID, so we're all we're all healthy. So that, oh, that is so, so we, great! And you're yeah. gonna go visit Grandpa. Yes. Yeah. Amazing, yes. amazing. Well, I really hope that. Um, uh, remind me of the little kitty's name again. Tabitha. Tabitha, that's it. I I will pray that Tabitha comes through her surgery, okay? And I will also be thinking of you as you visit Grandpa. And I am so so happy that you're going to be visiting extending family, uh, extended family, and that you are healthy as can be. It warms my heart. Thank you, Delaney, for sharing. Welcome. And uh, okay, so as you know, uh, I have the next three Sundays off, um, and I will miss you so much. I will think about you all the time. I know that you are in good hands with Carrie and with Brian. I'll be back on the 25th um, of July, on Sunday, the July 25th, and uh, take care of each other and love each other, and I'll see you when I get back. I love you all so much. Happy Pride! <laughs>